I got the Mikey microphone from Blue yesterday when I ordered it from Amazon, and today it's going back. The Blue Mikey microphone has a plug that attaches to the bottom of an iPod Touch where you normally place your charger. This puts the Mikey on the bottom of the touch. So if you hold it this way, you're good to go. Blue provides a piece of software called Blue Fire. And whenever you start Blue Fire, you get a nag screen to upgrade to the paid version of it. I tried to upgrade to the paid version of it, but my iPod Touch is an older version and can't run the paid version, and I get the nag screen every time I start it up. The software is good. It's, uh, it provides stereo sound, which none of the other software I use on the iPod does when I record. The Mikey is a, a stereo microphone, and I'll show you later what happens when you hold the microphone upside down, which is where I normally use it when I'm recording. As you can see, the microphone is large in comparison to the size of the iPod, and that's a problem because the port for the earphones is right here, and I don't have any plug that will fit the, this gap and let me monitor recordings while I'm making them and I can't listen to the recordings after I've made them without unplugging the iPod, uh, unplugging the Mikey. So that's an aggravation. The software which Blue recommends using for recording is called Blue Fire, F-I-R-E, and it's excellent software. As I said, it's stereo, and it's as usable as any Mac iPod Touch uh, apps that you'll find anywhere. It provides stereo sound which is accessible by a built-in uh, Wi-Fi web browser. The problem with it is you have to touch this a little globe which gives you the URL that you need to use to download from your browser. It's a dotted quad the dotted quad stays the same every time, however, the port changes every time. So you can't bookmark the uh, URL in your browser, web browser, and have it find this every time. You have to determine from touching the globe, it gives you the port number, and you have to type in the port number manually every time. And that's an aggravation. The other programs I use, however, sync with iTunes. And the problem with them is you have to plug the iPod Touch into your computer, sync with iTunes, and then go to the files to find the uh, recorded, uh, recorded files. And that's not all that convenient either. Frankly, I think the Blue Fire is more convenient because I don't have to plug in and wait, and wait for the thing to sync with iTunes. Another minor nit to pick with it is that you have no control over naming the files. You can pick a prefix and you can pick how the suffixes come up. So I've picked the prefix fire so that I know it's from the iPod Touch. And then it's a serial number. So every time you delete, the numbering starts again. So I have fire 1, fire 2, fire 3. Unfortunately, this is totally unhelpful when I'm trying to match a recorded item with video, and it's Fire 1, Fire 2, and Fire 3. When I use other programs for recording, I can name the file specifically what I want, and then when I'm looking for it, I'll know the file when I see it. And I consider that a much more convenient way to have file names than with uh, a prefix and then serial numbers. Another problem I have with the Mikey microphone is that the iPod Touch can't always find it. So when I start the Blue Fire program, it'll either tell me that I have no microphone attached or it will try to record and there's no input even though the Mikey is attached and the light is on that shows that it's powered. And I don't know how to recover from that. I end up having to quit the program, remove the Mikey, 
and then start the program and install it or install it and then start the program trying to figure out which way to do it. I'm sure if I used the Mikey enough I'd figure out how to have it start automatically. Uh, you know, but it's an aggravation. The sound that you've been hearing has been recorded from the microphone on my Canon G12. One of the, the problems with that microphone is it's not very good, and the other is having it far enough away from me that gets me on the video screen means the microphone picks up room echoes to a certain extent. So the sound you're hearing now is on the, on the, the Mikey microphone. Room echoes to a certain As I've said, so when you install it, it goes on the bottom of the microphone, which means that I'm recording with it upside down. With just one person, that's not an issue, but when you're recording with, with it with more down. than one person and it's with in stereo just one person, that's you end issue. up with the channels but when reversed you're recording with it with more than one person and it's in stereo and that can be disconcerting when you're trying reversed. to listen to people and the sound is coming from the other person's and side of the screen when, when you're someone is talking to a minor aggravation and the, and the program that i use will reverse channels but talking. It's a minor aggravation. You know, the, yeah. And the program that I use in the videos on Blue's channels, website, you see the iPod Touch you know, being the, held yeah. by an arm in that's the videos attached on to something. Blue's website, you and see that would the be the way to handle touch it. Being held but by it's an, arm that's an aggravation if you're going to have to handhold the microphone. That would be the way to handle to it. But have to handhold the microphone. An and there's no other way that I can think of that makes it portable and useful in the field other hand than just handholding. And there's no other way that I can think of that makes it portable and useful in the field other than just handholding it. You may be able to see on the back of the Mikey that there's a switch here. It has three positions. One is for low noise sources like uh, according to the manual acoustic violins or guitars. The second position is for moderate loudly, moderately loud sounds like conversations and that's what I have it set for now. And the third position is for loud events like loud parties and concerts. I found that I had to adjust the in, through the software the gain applied to the microphone uh, for moderate sounds, and I suspect you will as well. I'm now using a lavalier mic that plugs into the earphone jack with a special connector, and that special connector has its own socket on it for earplugs, so I can use the earplugs and the lavalier mic at the same time, or I can use the earplugs later to listen to the recording and make sure I got it all. The lavalier mic is unobtrusive. I have it hanging over my shirt collar. I, it has a clip on it, so if I have a button front shirt, I can just clip it to the button front shirt and pick up my voice. I'll let you judge whether or not the lavalier mic is of the same or similar quality to the Mikey, but I find the convenience of having a lavalier mic far outweighs the aggravation of having to handhold the Mikey mic in front of me and I get some popping sounds I noticed so a, a windscreen would have solved that. The Mikey is $40 from Amazon and the people who make the windscreen charge $40 for the windscreen. So I'm going to stick with the lavalier mic and Monroe recordings that I'm using now until I find something that makes me happier than the Mikey. <laughs>